Welcome back to the Immigration Answer Show. My name is Jim Hacking. This is episode number 449. We are one away from 450 of the Immigration Answer Show. I'll be here for the next hour trying to deliver as many of your um, immigration questions as I can for the next hour. I'm all dressed up today. I had a naturalization interview. And, you know, I give a lot of grief to USCIS, but, man, we had the nicest officer ever. She was so kind to my client. She um, came out and met his baby. She was very kind to him. She was very encouraging when he was taking the test. She um, helped him out a little bit. Uh, one of the questions was, what's the capital of your state? And he said, Jefferson. And she said, Jefferson. And he goes, city. So he, she helped him. And she was also just really, really nice to him. And uh, one of our new lawyers, Jill, came with me so that she could see how it all worked out. Um, so, um, you know, I got a call like I see it and this officer, uh, I would be happy to be in front of her anytime. She was very, very pleasant. And my client got, our client got, uh, recommended for approval. She said his ceremony letter will come in three weeks. So that was interesting because that was something I hadn't heard before. Apparently they can tell in, at least she could tell when the letter would be generated for the next ceremony for him. So that was pretty good. I'm glad to see everybody here. A lot of our usuals are here. Go ahead, if you haven't introduced yourself before, let us know who you are and where you're watching from. Um, love to hear from friends far and wide. Love to see where everybody's watching. Our friend Robert is here from the West Coast. Up oh, there he is, Los Angeles. Um, and we got uh, Inns in the DMV and uh, Kadisha's in Atlanta. So let us know in the comments where you go or where you're watching from. I'm going to have to stop just a little before 1130. So we'll probably go about 55 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started and talk to Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Good morning, Jim. Um, how are you guys doing? Uh, big fan, new fan. Um, your guys' work um, helps me do my, my work. work. I, uh, I'm very appreciative. Right. I nice. happen to have a, uh, a cousin who came from uh, Peru and uh, on asylum about a year ago. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, he um, recently received a DUI and um, they got him on three charges. I think uh, reg regular DUI, um, uh, dangerous maneuver and DUI uh, greater than 0.08. So um, I wanted to know, is it worth putting up the legal battle or should he just prepare himself to go back home? Well, I think it would depend on the seriousness of the asylum claim. I mean, if, if it's if you, you said this person's from Peru, mm -hmm. that's not a country we usually see persecution claims coming from. What What is it about going back to Peru that scares them? Um, there's a lot of political um, upheaval right now with the, um, the, the, the the like a lot of political persecution. Um, I'm not too sure exactly what their um, their claim is about, but um, I do know that it is um, there's like um, like people um, that, like committing violence against other people for political reasons. Well, um, I guess it's sort of hard to say without looking at the file itself, but I think any asylum officer is going to be a little sus of the, of an asylum claim from Peru. And of course, asylum is one of the most discretionary benefits that's out there and getting a DUI shortly after arriving isn't something that's going to increase their, um, increase their sympathy for that person. So I would think they just made their case a whole lot harder, whether it should be withdrawn and goes back. I mean, just the fact that they're thinking about that tells me that they're not that concerned about the, the risk to them in Peru. And if, you know, you know them better than I do, if you get the sense they did this because somebody told them this was a clever thing to do in a way to work hard, then that seems sort of dumb and they probably need to withdraw it. They're convinced that they want to stay. Um, well, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure they want to stay. Every Lots of people get convinced they want to stay. The question is, do they have a legal way to stay? Right. Yeah. And I don't want him to spend, you know, 10 grand of his hard earned money on fighting this out and drawing this out. Um, if, you know, he's he's going to put himself in a situation where, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. I mean, again, they're going to be really sus suspicious of a asylum claim from Peru. Hey, what's that bubble? That's fun. Um, where, I don't know where that came from. Did you see that? I did. Yeah. Okay. I thought I was tripping or something. And um, number two, uh, you know, one thing that you might ask him is, hey, one of the biggest 
indicators of a future threat of persecution is past persecution. So if you can tell me, Aaron, about prior times where you were persecuted or I mean, political persecution is really tough. We've had we had a great case. Andrew and I had a great case. Well, a great. The, the sad thing about asylum is that what makes a case great for the lawyer means that it's pretty tough for the client. So I, I should be careful how I I say that. But um, this this young gentleman was from Burundi or Rwanda, Rwanda, I think, and he had he had text messages or yeah, he had text messages and Twitter threats from the head of the um, military police of the ruling party in this country saying, if you come back here, we're going to get you. And I mean, I thought that was like a slam dunk case. He got asylum. He got referred. So if it's just some squirrely, hey, I think things are bad in Peru and I like it here in America. And, you know, they're doing mean things to certain people in Peru. And I think I'm like them. That's that sounds like a a loser to me. Yeah, I'm yeah. not too sure exactly the specifics of this case. He had sure. like to share that with me, and I know it's because it's like very um, uh, traumatic for him. So um, I'm I'm hopeful that it's stronger than that. Did he did he a lawyer file it or did he file it himself? I think he has a lawyer. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, good luck, Aaron. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Bye, buddy. Meets here. Hello, Meet. Um. Hello. Um, yeah, I'm a new new watcher. I joined the show for the first time today. Uh, I am currently in USA and working um, on H1B. And my question is about H1B transfers. So I am switching uh, companies and I'm joining a new company. I've already applied for the H1B transfer there. They want me to be working with them after the receipt notices. Uh, arrived um uh, but i i want to like continue working at the current company until the uh approval uh, notice arrives um uh, so because both the works are both the jobs are remote um i i can um uh, like i'm i'm able to do both of them for like a short period of time but i, I wanted to know if that is something which is uh, allowed can't work for both at the same time. Um, you can only work for one at a time. So you need to be really careful about that. Now, if you're talking a matter of a couple of weeks, I don't know that anybody's going to get all worked up about it. But the, the rule is that unless unless they file for a separate H1B, not a transfer, you're not going to be able to work for both at the same time. So it's, it's, it's not unusual for the employer to want you to start upon receipt. But from the employee's point of view, in the slim chance that something goes wrong on the transfer, you know, from the employee's point of view, it's better to wait like you want to until the case is actually approved. Um, and uh, how, uh, what's the chance of like something going wrong there? Uh, I mean, it's rare, but it does happen. So sometimes cases get denied for weird reasons. Um, maybe they don't like the remote aspect of the job because if the job's remote there's always an argument well why can't you do that back in your home country if it's remote so um, i mean i think most transfers go through and you know i think that it's unlikely that there's a problem but it's one of those things where if there is a problem it could be severe right you, you could find yourself without a job or without a um or without you know this whole thing working all right um, yeah, that, that was our helpful. Thanks, me. See you, buddy. Yeah. All right, all right. Christine's here. Hello, Christine. Good morning, Jim. Could I be taken off the camera, please? Sure, you're off the camera. Okay, so two questions, two things um, I want to address with you. First, I want to ask you do you do child protection act cases? You mean like, do I work on cases where children are about to age out? Yes. Sure. Okay, and I, I, how do I get to, to contact you? To um, Do I have to send the, the documents to you guys for you to see, to know whether or not the child is protected underneath? Because they change the status, but me doing my little check, I don't see where she is, um, or that she, she aged out. 
Yeah, we can do the math for you. I like I like working on that. You can send the you can send us the stuff. We need we need the the, the first birthday the application they apply. There it is again. Um, send us the. Oh, I guess it's when people like it. I get a bubble head from when people say. I see a like sign. Yes, yeah, somebody like somebody pressed a like. Yeah, that's funny. Um, so when you the person's date of birth, the benefit they're applying for, the date the I one thirty the I one thirty was received, and the date. Um, the I-130 was approved by USCIS. So if you send me that stuff or just send me, you know, that that's the information we need to do the calculation to see if they aged out or not. Okay, because all the money was paid and everything. It was two children filing for one came last, um, this year of the 3rd of January and the other one, they just changed it to, we're expecting a, 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 the interview for her, they just changed it to F2. Right. Yeah, yeah. Send it over. Yes. I'll what I think. Okay, and the other thing, I'd call you before about suing the government and I eventually got an appointment and I went to the interview on the third of this month. Okay. And surprisingly, and as I was saying to you before, that they, they, they said that they didn't receive the medical which I sent from April the 11th. Upon doing the interview, they still did not, the officer still did not find the, the, the receipt of the RFE for the medical. Okay. And he went ahead and do all of the, the interview and let me sign that the interview is completed and asked me to send a copy of the, the, the medical to him, which I did. The only thing I remember um, seeing this week up to this morning when I look at her, when they say action was taken on your case and it was just said that um, your case is in, in review. Is there anything that I should be worried about or anything like that? No, there's probably some click, click, click problems. Like the system's a little bit off because they didn't get your medical the first time, and you know. Because he said he wasn't, he wasn't going to send me a RFE again. He just gave my lawyer the, 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 the information to, to um fax the tracking number, but I couldn't find the tracking number, so I went ahead and get back a, a um a report from the doctor's office and sent it back into it. Did you send it to him in a sealed? Envelope yes, no? yes. The doctor sealed it and everything, just like the first one. And you have proof of delivery? I I actually dropped it off at the doctor's, and that is why I'm, I need a different lawyer because this lawyer she does not respond to you. It's been over a week now because I have dropped it off at the office for her to mail it with the money to mail it and everything, and I've been emailing her about um, did it to ask whether or not they send it anything. She's not responding. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, that's 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 too bad. So, so yeah. I just have to just just yeah, have to keep, just wait. Yeah, keep bugging her and say I need I need proof that you submitted it. Send it to me right now. I'm I'm about to do that to send you know send me a tracking number or something. I need something to know that you because I don't want to be denied because they don't get the, right. the and the officer was rather rude. He rude to me, my husband, and to her. It was a very tough interview. Very tough interview. I'm sorry, Christine. All right, well, good luck. Keep us posted, okay? Yes, I definitely will. And I get in touch with you guys today. Okay, bye bye. Thanks. All right, all right. N400's coming up. N400 on Saturday. That's like tomorrow. What's up, N400? Thank you for taking my call, Jim. How are you doing today? I am great. How are you? I'm good. Can't complain. I'm calling on behalf of my wife. It's her interview. It's tomorrow. Okay. And I'm wondering what to expect because this is a second and 400 interview. Her first one was denied. Why? Uh, for continuous residency, we filed it too early. <clears throat> you mean she had too much time outside the United States? Yeah, that year she spent like seven months out. How long ago was that? Uh, that was in like 2016. And the first application we filed it in November of 2021. So now now we have at least four years and a day since her long trip. Yeah, she's been here from since uh, 2000 and, uh, August 2017 continuously. And then when did you apply for this new application? Well, they, they gave us a den uh, the, the first one. They gave us a denial in February of 2023. And then we refiled it in June. And we got like a, a scheduled for interview in like about three months. So it sounds like you're in good shape. All right. So is there anything that she should expect 
tomorrow? Mm, no, I mean, just the regular naturalization stuff. Um, she hasn't had any trips more than six months since she came back on that one. No, probably just two, maybe six days. Another one is probably four days or something like that. Yeah, I think she's good. All right, that sounds good. And I have other one more question because it's it's concerning me. Like it's a multi-step process, and I'm going to hire you guys when it comes to me for my adjustment okay. of status. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had a uh, an arrest in my home country for like probably like way under thirty grams of marijuana. Is that going to be a problem? Uh, how did you enter the United States? Uh, through the, the airport with a visa waiver program. Visa waiver. Okay. All right. So not you didn't apply for a visa. You never filled out a DS-160? I had visas when I was younger, and I did a try to apply for one maybe 2020. It was denied because uh, I was going back and forth because my wife and my son lived here. And then... One time I stayed like four or five months, and then when I tried to came back, they stopped me and they had a lot of questions in secondary. And then she told me like I need a visa. I applied for one. It was denied. But then like a few months after, because our country is a visa waiver country, I went back as I wanted to come to see my son graduate from second grade, and the officer let me through. I'm probably not so worried about the marijuana if it was just a really small amount. My bigger concern right now is whether you previously disclosed that on prior visa applications. Yeah. Uh, I filled it out myself, so, and that was a long time, so I don't remember. Well, you know who is going to remember? USCIS is going to remember. They're going to go track that shit down, and they're going to figure out what you what you said before. And then they're going to try If you didn't disclose it when you applied for that visa, they might have problems. Even if it was denied? Yeah, sure. Oh, well, that's a good question. Can I get in trouble for shit, things I put in a visa that got denied? That's a good question. And the answer to that question is yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, yeah, they look, well, they, they look at every piece of paper. Well, once once my wife, hopefully, God willing, if my wife gets a N-400 approved, I'm coming to you guys for sure. Yeah. And how great. much is the... How much is the filing fee for the adjustment of status? Filing fees right now are um, are uh, five thirty five and um, fourteen forty. Fourteen forty. I don't know, something like that. I don't. I don't do filing fees anymore. I'm sort of out of all that. Uh, I mean, I mean for you guys, the lawyer fee. Sorry about that. I questioned yeah, word it wrong. Okay. Um, our legal fees to help someone get their green card is fifty seven hundred. Okay. No problem. All right, um, I appreciate what, you taking. What, uh, sure. What field office is doing naturalization interviews on a Saturday? Is it Baltimore? Uh, no, Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay, cool. Thanks uh, so much. Good luck to her. Let us know how it goes. I right, appreciate it. Thank you very much. See ya. Hope is here. Hello, Hope. Mm, did Hope disappear? We've lost Hope. Oh my gosh, we've lost Hope. We've lost all Hope. Hope, are you there? All right. Hope is gone. Hope has left the building. Khaled is here. Hello, Khaled. Hi, good morning, Jim. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you, my friend? I'm hanging in there, my brother. Thank you very much for taking my call. Uh, uh, let's be on the topic. I'll not waste your time. And the thing is that I was uh, in my immigration interview on 13th of September. My birthday? No, no. no. I was... I was in the U.S. consulate for my immigration interview on 13th yeah. of September. I know, and I'm just saying that was my birthday on September 13th. Oh, that is your birthday. Great, great, which, great. Which, which consulate? It was in Islamabad, Pakistan. And what, what are you applying for? A spouse visa or what? It was green, yeah, spouse visa, IR1. Okay. It was. Yep. So and uh, what happened? Uh, I need a waiver, I-641 or I-212. I overstayed my previous visa. Yep. In ten years. Okay. How long ago did so you? So they gave me ten. Yeah. How long ago did you leave the United I'm, States? I'm. Uh, 
is four years, almost four years. Okay. So what, what's your hmm. question for me? Uh, the thing is that uh, the things are not good with my wife uh, anymore. I mean, it's dying down. You know, I'm out uh, from U.S. since four years, and it's it doesn't seem right to let her wait for that uh, long. So, so, I mean, we have decided that, uh, I mean, we are going to maybe do a divorce or annulment. So I... I was, I was also a qualified uh, for U visa. I mean, there was an incident back in 2018 when I was robbed on the gunpoint uh, while I was, I was working. And uh, then I was thinking that, uh, is it okay that she will file a divorce and then I can apply for a U visa plus a waiver of 212D3? Um, Jim Hacking, do you think that that the U.S. consulate in Islamabad is going to give a U visa to someone who previously filed a spouse case, who overstayed his visa, who has a 10-year bar. Do you think that under any circumstances, the State Department will ever approve a U visa in that situation? And Jim Hacking's answer is, no, I don't think that's ever going to work. It will not going to work. No. No, okay. So, I mean, it's better to go ahead and file a I-601. If the marriage is legit and you want to still come, I think that's your best bet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's, it was one of the legit marriages. Believe me, I mean, uh, that was one of the very legit. Uh, uh, we are married since eight years. So, I mean, it was good. Yeah, I think you anyway. Everybody, everybody and his brother has a U visa that they think that in their back pocket. So I just think those are much harder to get than people think. And I think it's almost impossible to get from overseas. Okay, that's not a possibility. So I can, I mean, that's the only way out. There is no way out other than that. Now, if you want to come back to the United States of America. Yes, that's what I am just trying to. I think that's all you got. Thanks, Khaled. Good luck, my friend. All right. All right. Thank you. You got it. Oh, hope is back. We have hope has returned. Hello, hope. Can you hear me? I think hope has some connection issues. Yeah. Darn it. Hope has left again. Hope has left again. Adisumba is here. Hello, Adisumba. Hi, Jim. How are you? Good. Just a quick question for your friend. Um, I've known him for like five years now and just uh, became a citizen and uh, one of his daughters too became a citizen. So now he wants the daughter to file for the mother, even though they are not together anymore. Um, so at what age can the daughter file and what would the daughter need to, uh, to apply for the mother? Okay, so let's back up. So what's the U.S. citizen, the daughter, what's her first name? Her first name is Akinola. Lola? Akinola, Akinola. Akinola, okay, so Akinola is a U.S. citizen, and how old is she? Uh, she's 21. 21, okay, and was she born in the United States? No, she got uh, a citizenship through the father. And how'd the father get his citizenship? Uh, I think through, um, not too sure, but I think through marriage, was well, divorced now for like seven years now. Okay, so basically, and what country is father from? From Nigeria. So do, dad comes to the United States from Nigeria, and when dad comes, and, and dad's a citizen now? Yes. And dad um, dad married a U.S. citizen, so it was, 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 uh, dad married to the girl's mother when dad came to the united states on his visit visa yes yes thank you so basically i'm i'm living in nigeria i have a wife i have a kid i i say to the united states hey i want to get a visit visa to the united states will you come back to nigeria oh yes i'll come back my wife and daughter are here so then he goes to america and he gets divorced and then he marries a u.s citizen and she applies for a green card for him and and she applies for a green card a visa or whatever for the kid the kid comes to the united states 
the kid now is a U.S. citizen. The kid is 21, and the kid wants to sponsor her mother to come to the United States. Uh, and and there was never any kind of like custody. Like the mom never lost her rights to the daughter. No, no. no. So I would say that the daughter and the daughter lives with the dad. Yes. Yes. And, and the dad is divorced from the U.S. citizen. Yes. So, so, yes, the daughter has the right and can apply for the mom. Um, the dad should stay completely out of it. He should not be involved in it in any way. Okay. Um, they're going to be suspicious. They're going to think this was the plan all along. That okay. the plan all along was... We're still married in Nigeria. We're still in love, but I'm going to have this other wife in America. We're going to act like we're divorced. And then once our daughter gets her citizenship, then she'll apply for you and we'll all be able to be back together again. That's what I'm worried about. Okay, well, it's been divorced now for like seven years. I understand. Not I understand. And, and probably, probably everything will be okay, but he, everybody needs to be worried about what I'm worried about, if that makes sense. I understand. I understand. But yeah, it should it should be it should be fine, especially if the dad's really disconnected from the mom. Then then it should be okay. But the dad shouldn't be involved at all. Shouldn't be the co-sponsor. Shouldn't do any of that stuff. Okay, so what? How, how will since she's just twenty one? Um, how can she get a co-sponsor? It's got to be someone other than him. It can be any oh. U.S. citizen or green card holder. It just can't be him. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Thank Thanks, Eddie so Samba. Have a good day. Have a good one, too. Thank you. Okay, bye. All right, Krish is here. What do you say, Krish? Can't hear you. We can see you, Krish, but we can't hear you. All right, Krish, we'll come back. We can't hear you, my friend. All right, Nishi's here. Hello, Nishi. Oh, hello, Jim. How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. A quick question, Jim. So my son' um, case has been filed since 2021, November 2021. However, on the UCIS um, site, it keeps showing that uh, case has been uh, is taking longer than usual. I did call you before on this regarding this case. And um, when I contacted UCIS, they told me that um, it's in the Boston field office. So I said, how do I know how long it will take or anything like that? They said that I should go on all field office, which the all field office shows um, 30, one month, 31.5, 31 and a half months. Is there anything I can do or I should just sit and wait on the 31.5 months to come up? So so what is so you're you're the petitioner for your son's case? No, it was my husband. It's my husband. Okay, so where are you from? Um Jamaica. And you came to the United States on a visit visa? Yeah, yeah, work visa actually. And did you bring your son? No, I didn't. He's back so home. Son, so son's overseas, and you're here. Yeah. Yeah. Your your spouse filed for a green card for you. Yeah, through marriage. You know, has that case been approved? Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm. I got my conditional green card. Yeah. Okay, and then after when 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 at what stage of your case did did um your spouse file for your son? Um, it's the same time, simultaneously, right, baby? So yeah, it's the same time. Okay, so so what I have is an I-130 for a stepchild of a U.S. citizen that's been pending since late 2021, i.e., two years ago. Yeah, yeah, April 2020. You're still at USCIS. Mm -hmm. You're not. You're not approved. You're not approved and sent to the NBC. You're still at USCIS. Yeah, that's the level it's at right now. Mommy, mommy's talking on the phone. Do you mama. live in Boston? Yes, I'm in Boston. I mean, there's no reason for the case to be in Boston unless they're going to do an interview with your husband, but that seems silly. Did they do an interview for you, or did you get your green card without an interview? No, they they, they didn't give me a, um, any interview. They just gave me my green card. 
Thank and you. when in 2021 was the I-130 for your son filed? Um, November, actually. November. So, okay, so we're almost at two years, right? Yeah. So I would say if no, I get that. I'll be cool. I would say if November rolls around and you don't have anything, you probably need to sue them and we can get that part of it approved so that you then get sent to the National Visa Center. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So wait until wait. November. I mean, you could do it now, but November's solid. Oh, oh, oh. All right. All right. Can get, yeah. Can I get like, um, can I get, I really want to use you on the case. Can I get like, uh, is it an invoice or something? Stating the cost and so. We handle cases all around the country, so it, it doesn't matter that you're in Boston. Oh, okay. All right. That's good. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. You got to just email us if you need anything. Okay, Nishi? Yeah, I will definitely. Thank nice you. Bye bye. Okay, bye. All right. Chris is back. Let's see if Chris. Oh, well, sorry, Chris. NSC314, what's up, NSC314? It goes off. Um, how you doing? Um, so how are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm all right. Um, so I recently just got married, um, and he is not from the U.S., um, and we are applying to get his green card. I guess uh, really, sorry, my thoughts are all over the place. I'm, I'm just really needing help with the, the process because um, mm. basically he came here on a school visa um, and he his father passed, he went back home, he came back. Mm. Um, he's been here since, ever since then, but uh, his visa, um, it's no longer valid. Are you stressed out about that? A, a bit, yeah. <laughs> don't be don't be stressed out. This is all going to work out. So, so how long? When you say he left, how long was he gone? I don't. I don't think it was long. Um, his father passed two years ago. Okay. And did he go back to school once he came back? Um, he did, but then he had to stop because um, he had no more assistance from his family. So basically, I have a kid on an, an international student here in the United States who was on an F1. His SEVIS record got terminated, and he's just been hanging out. And now he, he married you. And are you a U.S. citizen? I am. So all of this is going to be fixed. There's nothing to worry about. So I can walk you through the process. So when, when did you get legally married? Uh, September 6th. So and how long? Recently. How long? Congratulations. How long have you been together all, all together? How long have you been? That's the part. OK, so all together, um, we have been together since July 15th. Like you first met him the very first time on July 15th? Yeah. OK, very quick, very quick. Very quick. And okay. I know. So I've I've watched a few of your YouTube videos and mm -hmm. I know that seems very suspicious like even we kind of joke about it and we're just like that seems very very suspicious um so we you, we know that are you your thing says nsc314 are you in st louis i am yeah why don't we just set up a time and we can meet with you and your husband and walk you through the whole process but i'll do it for you now basically here's what happens so you're going to file a bunch of forms you're going to file an i-130 petition which is i'm a u.s citizen i want to sponsor my husband for a green card and then an i-130 and that an i-130a is background information about so that they get all your background information because you're he's married to a u.s citizen you're going to file for a green card he's going to apply for a green he's also going to apply for a temporary work card a temporary travel document you're going to have to sign something called an affidavit of support which says that if he ever gets government benefits and he can't pay them back that you'll pay them back you have to have made enough money, 125% of the poverty guidelines, which is around $28,000, $29,000 in each of the last three years. If not, you're going to need a co-sponsor, someone else. And then the last thing is he's going to have to do a medical exam. So mm -hmm. you're going to submit all that stuff to USCIS. Once he gets that back, he's back in status. And then as long as they believe the marriage, which is sort of what our job is, is to help, them, help you guys prove up the marriage. I mean, yeah, it's new now, but by the time you get an interview, it'll mm -hmm. be a year and a half old. So... So if you're spending time at night worrying about this, you shouldn't. It's not the easiest case in the world, but it's certainly approvable. Okay. That, that, 
that does that makes me i just it, it's just it was that part because again like i've watched some of your videos and it was just like don't apply too early or don't apply too late and i'm just like okay well we're in that early but we're also in that late stage so it's kind of like that did have me a little stressed so yeah have, have either of you been married before no what country is he from india okay yeah we can work on this yeah okay thank you all right thanks so much talk to you later yes you yeah. as well thank you okay bye all right she had her southwest badge on you know i love southwest that's my favorite airline i'm always a one wait hold on she's making a face what why are you laughing I why are you laughing that off oh my god sorry sorry oh gosh okay, no no sorry. it's fine it's my fault like i'm i'm at i'm at work so i was just like yeah. no it's all good know, it's your I, lunch, it's your, it's your lunch yeah. break it's all good no we love southwest I, I'm, I'm a1 all the time thank you well, thank you i appreciate it yeah. keeps Thanks. me keeps me in work okay bye oh man that was funny that look on her face was priceless when when i mentioned southwest uh probably shouldn't have done that all right Chris is back. Chris, you got that audio fixed? Hey, hi, Jim. Yes. What can I help you with? Yeah, hi, Jim. First of all, I would like to tell about uh, thanks. And uh, <laughs> and I just wanted to give the high background about my case. Okay. Uh, I was on the show. I always contacted you about my situation. My I-130 is approved. And uh, my I-485 is pending. I, wa I was on uh, my H-1B. I went to India and I came back. So, like... Uh, I contacted you and you said, uh, I think it's long delay. So let's give it a try. So, and I hired you uh, gym hacking law and uh, the lawsuit worked and uh, I received my green card. I wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. And uh, especially uh, thanks to Nadia, starts with Nadia and uh, Ryan and um, uh, Pillar and uh, Christina. Christina, and, uh, awesome. Uh, yeah, Christina, and uh, one big uh, super thanks to the gym, especially. You are the one person to uh, contacted you through this platform, and uh, you gave me an opportunity to work with you. And uh, I wanted to say, uh, like, many thanks. I cannot even express my thanks in words. So you can imagine, like, I'm so happy for the working with, uh, especially Gym Hacking Lab. I could have hired you a little bit early, so, like... Uh, but I highly encourage the people, whoever in the show, and uh, hiring is gym hacking law is uh, best thing I would say. And uh, uh, and one more thing, Jim, like I would Thank like you. to say, yeah. So uh, I know immigration fees are expensive. I understand. Compare with other like immigration laws, you are like decent prices. So I would like to say that note as well. And I would like to, uh, next month is Thanksgiving is coming. I would like to give some presents to the uh, your uh, like uh, community or uh, your office or something as the small gift because uh, Thanksgiving is coming. So like it would be nice, like uh, uh, should you want me to shoot an email so that I'll get the, some information. So that yeah, you can, you can email me directly. You, can, you just email me. You, you probably have my email, don't you? Or just email Christina. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. So yeah, yeah, that means a lot. So, and uh, once again, thank you so much. And uh, I really uh, like the way you guys are treating and uh, responding calls and uh, like explaining the situation, like everything. Like, uh, it's really amazing. Like, you don't, uh, like, uh, all the time, whenever I, I need some help, and uh, you guys are like just uh, sweet and short and uh, very helpful. So, I highly encourage the people. And I have one quick question, Jim. So, my uh, case, I'm on my H1B. My current H1 expires on September 9, uh, 30, 2023. My employer filed an extension June 2023. That uh, he filed in regular basis. The case is still in progress. Uh, meanwhile, I got uh, my green card. So, like, should I call my employer saying, hey, I got my GC. Do you want me to withdraw the case? I don't need to worry about the withdrawal, the H1B extension. Yeah, that's what, exactly what I would do. I'd send them a copy of your green card and go from there. Oh, okay. So, no, uh, do you want? I need to withdraw the it's on the extension. You can't. Only he can. Oh, he can. Okay, okay. That's all, Jim. And once again, thank you so much, Jim. You're welcome, my friend. Have a great day. Thanks, Chris. You too. Thank you. Well, that sure made me happy. That just was a great way to spend some of my day on Friday. That was very kind. We got a lot of nice comments too. Um, 
Alicia said she's learned a lot from the show. So that's very nice. Um, that makes us happy. Um, we happy with that. Uh, a lot of good comments. Thank you. Oh, um, all right. All right. Um, apparently the November visa bulletins out and it didn't move much. That's not going to make people happy. That's unfortunate. Hey, James is trying to get in the waiting room. James, James, if you're really in Madagascar, you got to get in here because you know we've been trying to get someone from Madagascar. Um, and we are certainly happy for Karth. That's great. I'm, gonna, I'm sure Huli's already told everybody that Nadia, Ryan, Pilar, and Christina all got shout outs on the show because that always makes us happy. All right, looks like Hope is back. Let's see if we can get her back on. Hope, can you? Oh, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, all right. Well, listen, if you're in the waiting room, show me your face so I know that you're there and I'll pull you up. Um, you don't have to necessarily be on camera when we're chatting, but that's how I know there are live people there. So Gigi's here and Gigi, I can um, put you in off camera. Gigi, go ahead. Thank you. Hi. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, so I have a quick question. I've talked to at least five lawyers if five. not more that's a lot um, yeah so my, my grandma, grandma came, came to the to u.s the in the 80s so she was able to get her green card um so then she petitioned for my dad and all of her kids right um my dad got approved in 1992 and he's been waiting ever since then he just sent in uh his application to get his green card finally um so my question is, he is protected under the 245I, and I was born in Mexico in 1995. Do I get, do I have the protection, I guess, for 245I? No. Or no? Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Okay. Well, that was my question. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gigi. See ya. All right. All right. Shola is here. Hello, Shola. Hello. How are you doing? Um, thanks for the uh, for the show. Um, <clears throat> I have a question, and the question is about. Um, I've been here since um 2017 as a student, <clears throat> but I didn't go to the school because I was pregnant. You mean you, and, never, went, you mean you never went to school? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, what country are you from? I'm Nigeria. So you went to the embassy in Nigeria and said, hey, I have all the money I need to support myself. I'm going to school. Can you please give me a visit visa? They gave you a visit visa because you told them you could support yourself. Then you came to the United States and never went to class. Yeah. Okay. So I was pregnant when I <clears throat> when I came here. So um, I changed my status, but um, I got married, but the marriage didn't go well. So um, the reason for this um, for this call now is my ex boyfriend, the father of my my son, he stays in Nigeria. So um, I just heard from him about a week ago that he applied for U.S. and it puts me under him that we are married. We are not married. So the father of your child is over in Nigeria. You're here hanging out with no real status. He's applied for a visit visa, and on that visit visa, he listed you as his spouse. Yes. Were you ever married? No. Did you ever have a cultural marriage or a religious marriage or a traditional marriage? Um, no, we actually did introduction um, about seven years ago, but um, when I came here, I don't know how long uh, we're going to take, so we break it. I said, um, no, it's just introduction, nothing like marriage. When you applied for your your student visa, did you tell them that you were married or single? I'm single. Okay. Right. So what's your question for me? What? What is your question for me? Oh. So um um is trying to apply now. I just got that he um because I did VAWA and it's still on it's still in process right now. So um I don't know if it's gonna affect me in any way. You could. It could. I mean, I mean, did he list you as? 
I list me as his wife and he put his son there that he was born in Nigeria. He's not born in Nigeria, he's born here in the US. So he's just a liar. Huh? He's just a liar. Um, he said um the person that applied for him asked him to do so. So um he's asking me if he if there's anything he can do because he wants to see his son. So I said I don't know. Well, did he get the no, he didn't. So he's asking if there is any way he can uh, apply for, like, because uh, I heard you say they can amend it. If they made a mistake, they can amend it. He didn't make a mistake. He was a fraud. He's not coming. So there is nothing they can do? Nope. Uh, um, and me, um, how do you think it's going to affect me in any way? I mean, the State Department's going to know about of you the spouse. I think the chances of that are pretty small. Okay. Good luck, Shola. Okay, thank you. That's a good question. Can other people lying about being married to me mess up my immigration status? I think there's scenarios where that could happen, but... Um, and you should obviously never do it, but <laughs> I don't think that's going to catch up to her in this particular situation. Hey, if you got 60 seconds and want to thank us for all the great videos and everything, all the content, and you could hop on reviewhackinglaw.com, leave us a five-star review, we would appreciate it. Soundy is here. Hello, Soundy. Can't hear you. Uh, hi, Jim. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, I have a small question. Uh, so I, I came to U.S. on F1 student visa. Then uh, I married a U.S. citizen and then I got the green card. Uh, it's been uh, four years I got the green card and I'm uh, thinking to apply for a citizenship based on his um, a reference, something like that. So what would be the process and how I need to proceed like that? What's the start date on your green card, Soundy? Uh, it's in uh, 2019, January. So you're going to apply on the five-year rule. You're not going to apply on the three-year rule. Okay. I can't apply for three years, is it? You can, but you shouldn't. Because if you apply on the three-year rule, you, you have to approve up the marriage. It's just a lot easier to apply on the five-year rule. Because you've had it for, well, oh, 2019? Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm bad at math. Okay. So... So when in 2019 did it start? Your green uh, it started in uh, January. January of 2019? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can apply on the five-year rule right now because you can apply three months early. Okay, okay, nice. So if I apply, what would be the, the cost for applying to your uh, organization? Yeah, so um, I think right now our... I haven't checked lately. Yuli, maybe Yuli knows um, what the fee is for a naturalization charge. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to pay 725 filing fee. I think our fee is around 4000 It might be a little bit more than that. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, okay. Something, but you're probably going to spend around five grand altogether. But yeah, we'd be happy to help. Okay. Okay. And uh, like, let's say if it is delayed, like I heard many news in your channel that uh, people get delayed, people get delayed response. So if it, uh, if if I uh, apply for uh, citizenship and it get delayed, so I can sue through you, your organization, right? Yeah, but most most naturalization cases don't need a lawsuit. You you probably don't need to worry about that if if you everything's cool with your marriage. If you were in status when you got your mm -hmm. when you got when you applied for your green card, I, you're you're probably gonna sail right through. It'll probably take four or five months. Okay. What what field office would have your interview, Soundy? Uh, it was in uh, Detroit. Detroit? Yeah, Detroit's a pretty good office. So I think you're probably five or six months. I don't think you have to worry about suing. Okay, okay. That's, yeah, that's all from my side. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Soundy. Okay, sure thing. Have a good day. All right, all right. That was Soundy. Um, have you guys ever noticed that sometimes people have that beeping sound? It sounds like a cricket. It's from the batteries on their um, smoke detector. I'm just surprised how often people that call the show have that beeping sound. Um, we should probably come up with a little game or something about it. It was twice today, twice today, that little beeping sound. I don't know why I always um, hear it, 
but my ear always picks up on it. My mother-in-law used to have a building down in the city and the, and it had four tenants and the tenants never replaced their battery. So every time I went to that building, I would have to, cause I was like the handyman, if you can believe that. Cause I'm like the least handy guy in the world, but I had to go change those damn batteries. So whenever I hear that sound, I have flashbacks to that damn building, which I'm so glad my mother-in-law doesn't own anymore. It was not fun. Chicks is here. What do you say, Chicks? Hey, I'm um, sorry. I just want to say thank you. Uh, last time I was in your show for, epi- I think, uh, episode 419, you told me to hold on, you know, after 124 days, 120 days, if they didn't do anything, that I should let you know so that you can sue them. But uh, unfortunately, uh, last week they sent me um, uh oath ceremony and notice uh, for me to come for for my uh, citizenship. Fantastic. When is your interview or when is your ceremony? Uh, <clears throat> supposed to be in next month, uh, November. That's great. That's great. I'm happy for yeah. you. I'm glad you didn't have to sue them. Saved yourself five grand. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you for your advice and uh, all the things that you asked me to do, do it before my interview and after my interview. Great. Congrats, chicks. Thanks for the call, man. See ya. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Okay, bye. Oh, we like it when people call back and have good news like that. Mary is here. Hello, Mary. Hi, James. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm fine. Just a quick question. I've been DQ'd in April, early April. I'm with the Kingston office. But until now, I haven't gotten an appointment date, a visa appointment date. So I'm wondering how much longer you think I would have to wait. What are you, what are, you what are other what are other people saying as far as DQ'd? I don't know how fast or slow the embassy in Jamaica is. Are you I'm hearing nothing at all? Okay. So the twenty eighth of this month would be two years since the whole process starts. Since you filed the I one thirty two years? Yes. When did USCIS approve the I one thirty? In March. March of twenty three? Yes. Yeah, I think you're just waiting. Okay. I, I I think people in the comments will talk about how fast things are going in Jamaica. Uh-huh. Six, seven months sounds about right. I would think you probably got a three or four more months left. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Bye, Mary. See ya. Uh, All right. Remy's back. What's up, Remy? You're on mute. Yes. Thank you, uh, Jim. Thanks for all you do. Yep. What's up? Yeah, we appreciate it. So a quick one. Um, thank you for the advice you gave and, and all that. So I, I wanted to ask you if um, when I'm sending my uh, application, do you advise I send to the lockbox facility or use a career service? The lockbox, you, you have to send it to the address. I would send it to the address uh, for the lockbox by Federal Express. Uh, oh, okay. FedEx to the lockbox. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is one. So, um, how important is this insurance thing? This health or life insurance? Your, your mic keeps dropping, so I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Oh, I'm sorry. I said, how important is the life of health insurance? In how important is how important is that? Yeah, if you don't have it, does it does it reduce your chance? Of- life insurance? No. Car insurance? I mean, that's that's nice because it shows you're living together and that you're paying your bills together. So, I I, I think car insurance is a good one to have. Nothing is re- nothing's required. You can get away with one or two things not having them, but you know you want to file the strongest case possible. So it's not so much the quantity; it's the quality. And you know. Okay, so um, how can I expedite my case? Do you think your I case should? Is, your case isn't even on file yet. Why are you trying to expedite it? No. Why should your case? Why should your case go faster than other people's cases? Can I can I go to another state to apply or just apply where I am resident? No, don't. No, nobody should ever play the "oh, I'm going to go live here" game in the hopes of getting their case to go faster, especially on a marriage case. On okay. asylum, maybe because some asylum officer offices are a lot better than others. But on a marriage case, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. You can't predict that. Thank you. Jim. Bye, Remy. See ya. All right, everybody, like I said, we're going to cut the show a little bit short. That'll do it for this week. We'll be back on Monday. 
at our usual time, 4 p.m. Central. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, well, maybe we'll be at 4 p.m. Central. Might have to move that because if Noor wins her softball game today, then she plays in the district championship at 4 on Monday. So fingers crossed they win tonight. Fingers crossed it doesn't rain. Um, so we may be at 4. We may be at some other time on Monday. Um, I might have to move that bad boy on Monday to something like uh, noon. Um, but we will we will know that later on today. Um, if you really want to know when we're going to go live and if you really want that link to the waiting room before we get started, text the word show to 314-470-3300. And that show on Monday will be our 450th episode, which is halfway to 900 and 50 of the 100 we need to get to 500. So thank you all for joining me. I hope you all have a great weekend. Thanks for all the great comments. Thanks, Yuli, for being here. And we'll see you guys on Monday. Hola, Yuli. Oh. Hola, Yuli. You're on mute. I can't hear you. Mm -mm. It's all right. I'll see you later. Was, oh, there no, I was going to say, when you do thumbs up, is when it shows that um, emoji. Oh, when I do it? Yes, because Adela has it too. See? Oh, that's so cool! Is that <laughs> is that uh, is that a streamyard thing or is it a? No, it's a, a something Chrome? in the camera because the other day I had a meeting with Adela and she did like this and it showed up. That's fucked up. <laughs> Ask Adela about it. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll see ya. See you. Bye. Bye.